in chemistry and is a graduate of the chemical officer basic advanced courses, the technical escort course, and the resident course at the command and general staff college. He has held numerous assignments throughout his career to include positions in units and organizations such as the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault, the 2nd Infantry Division in Korea, the U.S. Army, Technical Escort Unit, a Specialized Weapons of Mass Destruction Response Unit, the 4th Infantry Division, the 3rd Chemical Brigade, part of the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, and at Headquarters Department of the Army in the Pentagon. Lieutenant Colonel Penland has received various awards throughout his career, including the Bronze Star Medal, for, for service, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, and the Korean Defense Service Medal. Lieutenant Colonel Penlin is currently completing his second year as the commander of the Radford Army Arsenal Pl Ammunition Plant and is slated to relinquish command this coming June. For his following assignment, he has been selected to attend the U.S. Army War College for academic year 2013 and 2014. And a man after my own heart, I have to say that when they started playing the Army song, I said, step forward. I thought he was just going to step forward. He started singing the song. <laughs> I loved it. thought it was great. Brought a tear to my eye. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce our Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Penland. Thank you. Thank you all. What a great day to be a veteran. What a great day to be a veteran supporter. It's great to see it such a large number of people out here today. Congressman Griffith, Delegate Yost, Mayor Brown, members of VFW Post 776, and American Legion Post 30, friends of the Greater Radford community, and of course, our veterans. First, I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me out here today to this Memorial Day Remembrance. I'm once again honored and I'm humbled to be before you today to participate. I'd like to thank Commander Gary Harris of Post 776 of the VFW and Commander Dana Jackson of American Legion Post 30 here in Radford for giving me this honor and opportunity today. First, let me say to the Radford High School Band and Chorus, magnificent performance, guys. Great performance by such a talented group of young people. Please join me in applause for their performance today. I'd also like to ask very quickly if the veterans and the Gold Star family members in the audience would take a moment to stand up or raise your hand as appropriate. Would you please stand? All your veterans. Thank you for your service and your selfless support. Thank you, guys. I'd like to think that those men and women long ago who imagined this holiday we now call Memorial Day knew what they were doing when they designated this time of year to honor the fallen. After all, this is a time of year of renewal, of strength after a winter of loss and silence. Flowers are in bloom all throughout the land on hallowed ground across this nation, subtly reminding all of us of those who eternally sleep beneath it. And along with their symbolism of renewal comes a reminder to pass on and to renew the stories of the bravery and sacrifice of our great warriors and pass those on to the children of tomorrow. So we take our cue from these symbols of growth and proclaim a day to tell the story of a soldier, the story of a sailor, an airman, a marine, a coast guardsman, our warriors who are no longer able to smell the sense of spring. Today I want to spend a few minutes reflecting on the stories of those warriors who died for our nation's cause, some in combat and some after a life long lived in uniform. People who won't make the pages of history, but people who made history nonetheless. They deserve our respect and our honor. They are the stories of this nation and they deserve to be heard and remembered and honored on this day and every day. Today we gather cemeteries all over the country to honor the loyalty and bravery of our fallen. While this day is typically spent recalling the valor of men and women who died in combat, I submit to you that we must never forget those who answered that noble calling to serve the people of the United States, but who didn't die in combat as well. Their passing doesn't make headlines, but their lives and profound sense of duty and patriotism resonates with a lifetime of service. It resonates with the warriors they met and trained, the normal day-to-day -day missions that they've done, the families they've left behind. It's the drill sergeant who trained new recruits, it's the sergeant who helped a warrior mend a broken marriage. It's the chaplain who comforted a warrior who just lost a battle buddy. Heroic deeds and actions that don't make headlines, and they're performed by unknown warriors and their families each day, year in and year out, without want of recognition. I think this is who we're obligated to remember. These great warriors die in nursing homes and hospitals every day, folks, and the fact that they did not pass from this world in battle does not diminish our responsibility as citizens of this great nation to show our respect for their service. 
These men and women too must be honored today and beyond. Now, I have a question for all of you. When's the last time you walked past someone who had a baseball cap wearing the name of a decades old battle or war? Did you stop? Did you thank them for their service? Did you shake their hand? Did you ask them their story? There's no time but today to know those veterans who so faithfully guarded our nation. So I challenge all of you, seize this day, seek them out, learn their stories, share them with the next generation. Resolve today to never let that warrior in the cap pass you by. While it's our responsibility as citizens to honor those who died in service to their nation, I submit to you that we have an equal responsibility to pay homage and honor them while they are still here today with us. And that's not a message you're used to hearing on Memorial Day, but it's one that I ask that you take to heart and consider nonetheless. Next, I want to share two stories of extraordinary people who wear the Army uniform and ordinary people who knew the price of freedom and who paid that price. Army Chaplain Captain Emil Capon grew up on a farm in Pilsen, Kansas. His first calling was to God. God, he said, called him to military service, and so he joined the Army. Capon was sent to Korea in 1950 to provide comfort and counsel to the troops as a chaplain during the first months of the Korean War. His soldiers quickly realized he was much more than just a normal chaplain. He became their soldier saint. And ironically enough, on All Saints Day, his unit came under heavy attack by Chinese forces, and the Chinese devastated the American lines day and night. Capon had the chance to fall back to safety with his unit, but he chose to stay in the thick of battle to minister to the dying and wounded. He braved barrages of bullets, going from foxhole to foxhole to check on his boys, risking his life to retrieve the wounded or take the bodies of the fallen. When the wounded were beyond saving, he gave them spiritual comfort. And after finally being captured and marched away by a Chinese soldier at gunpoint, Capon still continued to protect his boys. He saw an enemy soldier, his weapon aimed, and moments away from executing another American soldier, Sergeant First Class Herbert Miller. Capon defiantly left his captor pushed the enemy soldier to the ground, picked up Sergeant Miller from the ditch and continued to march. The enemy troops, too stunned to act, did nothing. Herbert Miller's life was spared, and Capon and Miller spent the remainder of their time in the war and turned in a prisoner of war camp in North Korea, and Capon died there in 1951. He was posthumously presented the Medal of Honor by the President at the White House on April 12th of this year. And what's truly amazing about this story, though, is that Capon did not shoulder a rifle. He didn't wield a bayonet. As a chaplain, his weapons were strength, faith, and honor. His death was a tragedy, but it's his life where we draw those lessons. So resolve today as citizens of this nation to take his story and tell your children and grandchildren about him and others. So his legacy and investment might always be remembered. Remember also warriors like First Lieutenant Ashley White Stump, who not only epitomizes those who sacrificed, but reminds us of the female warriors who placed themselves in harm's way right alongside their male counterparts. Ashley joined ROTC in her first year of college at Ohio's Kent State University and met her future husband, Jason Stump, there. After graduation, Jason went on active duty and Ashley joined the National Guard. Now, she'd often talked about deploying and she wanted to serve in a meaningful way and to her deployment was doing, was doing just that. In 2010, as many of you know, we were facing a lot of challenges in Afghanistan often not fully understanding events on the ground because women would not talk to the male soldiers on the ground, the male warriors. It was culturally taboo. So the Army began training female warriors to be part of elite teams to go out on missions with Army Rangers and Special Forces to help build rapport with the Afghan women. Those groups were called Cultural Support Teams, or CSTs, and they were trained using the same tactics that we use to train our males. The CSTs filled a critical component of mission success, and combatant commanders knew it, and everyone quickly found out we couldn't do the job without them. Ashley learned about the program, and she was very excited, and she knew it was a perfect job for her. And after Jason came back from, Viet or from Afghanistan, he listened to Ashley, and being the Army officer he is, he did his analysis and put it into three separate buckets. As a husband, he struggled to be supportive of his wife and his goals and desires while still wanting to protect her. As an Afghan war veteran, he knew very well the frustration and fear of being deployed in combat. And as an Army officer, he wanted to have the best person for the, for the job for the Army. Well, that was Ashley. And so watching the excitement in her eyes, she knew he knew she had to deploy, and she did. And she was doing exactly what she set out to do. She was doing her duty. She was serving her nation. And it was a Saturday morning when Jason's doorbell rang. A peek through the peephole showed, every, showed him what every Army spouse never wants to see. The commander, the first sergeant, and a chaplain standing there in their Army blue uniform. 
Ashley was killed in combat by an improvised explosive device. Next to her were Sergeant First Class Christopher Demedge and Private First Class Christopher Horns. All three died serving their nation in combat, shoulder to shoulder. And we honor them and the thousands like them on this day. Lastly, I want to talk about another group of heroes, our family members and friends. There are men and women here and across the country whose lives were never the same after that knock at the door, but they carry on every day. So many mothers, wives, and husbands, and fathers, extended family and friends who carry on ensuring their loved one is remembered with, me me with mementos or pictures of a life not fully lived. They carry on understanding that their warrior chose this life of service, and they understand the potentiality of their death as a sacrifice for the sake of freedom. To those family and to those friends, we also honor you. For you bear a burden only you can comprehend. We are grateful for the support that you've given your warrior so they could carry out the mission of protecting all of us. We are grateful that you are here to carry on the story so that we might also know your warrior's bravery. We thank you for your service and help you carry on. In closing, it's our responsibility as citizens to remember the nation's brave fallen men and women, whether they died in foreign lands or in the heat of battle or after a lifetime in uniform. Never forget their service to this country is the greatest gift of all. As you get ready to round out your long Memorial Day weekend with barbecues and parades and family gatherings, I again challenge all of you, resolve to continue the narrative of this holiday with your loved ones. <laughs> Ask a veteran his or her story. What day is better than today to commit to doing this small task? Remember that today is both a day of somber or somber day and a day to rejoice, a day to weep, and a day to sing with joy. Today is both a day of forgotten valor and a day to remember it. Today is a day of spring's renewal in the shadow of winter's mortality. And mostly of all, today is a day to tell the stories of our warriors of duty, honor, country, sacrifice, so that our warriors of yesterday and today and their legacy are never, ever forgotten by the children of tomorrow. Again, I'd like to thank everyone in the greater Rapid community for allowing me just a few minutes to be with you today. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless our great nation. Thank you. As you heard earlier, this is the commander's last time here. Commanders at the arsenal are appointed for two years, and then they move on to something better. His better is he's going to the war college and is going to be promoted, and that we look forward to. He'll give up command on June 11. In the meantime, for two years, he has worked with us on the committee here, which is not always the case with as busy as the commanders can be, but he's been with us and been doing what we needed him to do to be part of our committee. And because of that, we present him with a certificate, which it... If I can get the attention of the man who's bringing the certificate, could you come over, please? <laughs> I've, I've introduced you. <laughs> oh, well. This is a commander of, uh, of the American Legion Post 30, and we present to the commander of the arsenal who's leaving us a certificate from the committee thanking him for his service with us and saying we really will miss him. While you're here, Commander, the other Commander, this one, we're going to get all this straightened out soon. Freedom isn't free, as we've told you. It costs lives. It costs family problems. Over 1.25 million men and women have given their lives in past wars. 